So I'm Niels Abel and I'd like to share some ideas about contemporary models of education. I teach high school mathematics so I'd like to start off with this example which I find quite interesting. It's a problem that almost all of us have at least attempted about two trains leaving from the same station. You might find it interesting because almost no matter what age you are you've been asked to do a problem like this but uh, that's not why I find it interesting. It, you might find it interesting because it's in every textbook pretty much in high school algebra in the United States right now but that's not why I find it interesting. I chose it because it comes from an exercise book in algebra written by McCurdy in 1892. It's not just an anomaly. About three-quarters of our current curriculum in mathematics in high school can be found in, in this McCurdy text. And in other subjects in, in high school, much of the curriculum is the same as it was back in 1892 and if not just the curriculum but also many of the methods that we use are the same. So much has changed since 1892 the zipper hadn't even been invented at that time. The world's population is now well over 6 billion. It was only 1.5 billion. We didn't have airplanes, television, modern medicine, credit cards. 1955 something really significant happened. Oil overtakes coal as the world's number one energy resource yet our curriculum even then didn't change. Then in 1990 the World Wide Web became available connecting us all electronically. It had the opportunity for us to change education drastically making it more exciting, accessible, interesting, applicable, yet much of our curriculum remains the same curriculum from the late 1800s. In December of 2006 there was a Time Magazine article how to bring our schools out of the 20th century and it begins by what's often told by educators that Rip Van Winkle awakens in the 21st century after 100 years snooze and recognizes um, nothing. Everything has changed. Airports, hospitals, shopping malls, everything is different but finally Rip Van Winkle gets back to a school and says oh now this I recognize. Here's an example of how things have changed so much that if you'd gone to the hospital things would be so different that the patient saying to the doctor that's not what it says on the web. Daniel Pink has important information for educators in his book A Whole New Mind. He says for nearly a century Western society in general and American society in particular has been dominated by a form of thinking and an approach to life that is narrowly reductive and deeply analytical. Ours has been the age of the knowledge worker, the well-educated manipulator of information and deployer of expertise, but that is changing. Thanks to an array of forces, we are entering a new age. It is an age animated by a different form of thinking and a new approach to life, one that prizes aptitudes that I call high concept and high touch. High concept involves the capacity to detect patterns and opportunities, to create artistic and emotional beauty, to craft a satisfying narrative, and to combine seemingly unrelated ideas into something new. High touch involves the ability to empathize with others, to understand the subtleties of human interaction and to find joy in oneself and to elicit it in others, and to stretch beyond the quotidian in pursuit of purpose and meaning. This is good news for educators if we heed Pink's words because we are good as educators at high concept and high touch. I'd like now to share some examples of ideas from the classroom that I believe are contemporary and relate to students in a high concept, high touch environment. Here's a graph of the NASDAQ composite index graphed from 1970 to the present. We can see that shortly after 2000 the stock market had a huge fall and recently the stock market has not been doing very well as either. 
fortunately in the early 70s even though the stock market wasn't doing fantastic it was very stable let's take a look at some other information reflecting on that in the early 70s the stock market was very stable 1973 to 1974 was the seventh worst stock market crash in the history of the stock market it, to go to the any ones that were worse than this you'd have to go back to the 1930s and before 45 percent of the value of the market was lost 694 total days of decline 1973 starting in January all, all the way through the end of 1974 was the seventh worst period in stock market history so what's going on here what's going on here is that we're looking at a linear scale if you go to and we're at finance.yahoo.com it will come up by default with a logarithmic scale. Same information, different scale. Now we can see that it's a huge crash. Interestingly, these types of graphs that involve logarithms, exponential functions, are not taught at all in most high schools yet people who have any kind of money to invest for their retirement base their choices of investment typically on graphs like this that include a logarithmic scale yet most people overlook it completely because no one's ever pointed out to them anything about a logarithmic scale this is a perfect example of the type of new curriculum that's uh, contemporary and, a f and we have the possibility with accessibility by all students of having technology in order to investigate exactly these types of graphs. Here's an example then of a homework problem that comes from history. A Norwegian historian Jan Holter drew this graph trying to sh from 1694 to 1994 showing the retail price index sort of like the US consumer price index only in Europe the homework assignment for students is to explain in a complete sentence why Holter used a logarithmic scale Holter was trying to demonstrate whenever there was war all of these black bars are war here's the Napoleonic War that there was a huge rise in the retail price index trying to show some relationship between wars and its effect on the economy and here's the solution that I offer to the student in the solution manual had Holter used an arithmetic scale here we see in red couldn't have seen any difference in the retail price index in these times of war Holter had to use a logarithmic scale in order, order to make his point.